how did the whole Gordon Ramsay thing come about? What happened? Okay. We, I came down to Brighton in the year 2000 to, because I decided I wanted to set up a soul food restaurant, okay? And um, we found our soul food shack in Brighton, and we were going pretty good there to begin with. I had never really run a restaurant on my own, so there were a lot of things that we just did not know in terms of the marketing side. I have one basic flaw, which I know, I accept. I'm a giver. I'm a feeder. I like to give things away. I used to feed the homeless on the streets of Brighton before I'd even think about selling the food. And so I had to change my mindset. Um, and it got to the point where we just weren't making money because people weren't coming through the door. Um, we were struggling. So I decided I had to do something to save my restaurant because I wasn't ready to let it go. So I came up with this bright idea about going on television. And I thought, what can I do? And then I saw this program, Wife Swap. So I said to my husband, um, Phil, he's a very quiet, minor man. You might have seen him on the show from Manchester. We are like chalk and cheese. We are like day and night, but we just right. So I said, Phil, <laughs> would you like to do wife swap? His face, now I'm talking about, yes, I am married to a white man. Well, he looked like Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> he lost all of the color went from his face. And he was like, and I said, come on, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Just as I had sent the email off to register for what's a facey, wife swap, I'm there at the restaurant, and this letter came popping through the door. I reached down, pick it up, open it up, and it was from Channel 4, Kitchen Nightmares. And they said, we are currently filming, our, about to begin to film our second series. And we are looking for people who own a restaurant that has been open for less than five years, that are struggling, and thinks that we could help them. Now... I'll be honest with you, I hadn't even seen the first Kid Nightmares, the first one, because people were talking about it, saying, oh, no, all he does is swear and this and that, Gordon Ramsay. But you know what? I was desperate, so I didn't care. So I picked up the phone, and I rang, and I got through to the production company, and I said, hi, my name is Sharita Jones, and I'm Mama Cherry, and I'd like to be on your program. And they were like, well... Why do you think, what do you, What makes you different from all of the rest? And and why do you think Gordon, well, I said, because I can tell you right now, Gordon don't know how to fry no chicken, and I do. And they started laughing. And then they were saying, well, you know, if he comes down to you, are you prepared to, you know, listen? And I said, look, I'll do whatever it takes. My restaurant is about to close. I need help. So they said, all right, what we're going to do is Gordon has the last say, but we're going to send him down to the restaurant. Um, no, they, no, actually, they sent down one of them little production people first, a runner. like. And when they came, I was, shoot, I knew how to work them. I worked them like a fiddle. I sat them down and said, first thing you got to do is eat. And I put a big plate of food, and they were like, whoa. They said, this food is good. Well, wh why do you have problems? I said, I never told you I couldn't cook. I just told you I didn't know how to manage this place. So next thing I know, Gordon turned up. And when Gordon turned up and I fed him and he finished that plate, I knew I was going to a winner. And so, and you know what? I loved Gordon Ramsay because I got a lot of respect for that man. Because at the end of the day, once he realized that my heart was into what I was doing, I didn't get all that effing and blinding like everybody else got. Because I turned around to him one time and I went up to him and I said, is that the way you talk to your mama? And he looked at me and he went, no mama. <laughs> and that was it. Ever since then, me and Gordon, we were good. So I love me some Gordon Ramsay. But you know what? I ain't too proud to beg. And you darling. <laughs> But please eat my food. That's it. Well, no, that's not it. Because, All right, was it? Well, the restaurant closed. Well, yeah, it closed. What, you mean it closed after Gordon came? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so Gordon came down to the restaurant. And the thing about it, the problem is, once we went on the television, we had to wait a year from when he filmed us 
to when it actually appeared. So we still were struggling for a year just to keep those doors open. But I'm telling you now, that program went out on a Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Well, I was living upstairs, I know. By 5 past 9, he had already cleared his plate. Mm -hmm. And it broke our answer phone. It did. We were fully booked for six months. It was crazy. Within 10 minutes. It was crazy. Because the power of television. And then what happened is everybody and his mama and his daddy and his grandma and his cousin decided to come and check us out, which I loved. But we were only a 40-seater. Mm -hmm. So we were turning away an average of 80 people every single night. It was crazy. Now, add that up. It was crazy. Now, Katrina, you were working there. It so was you, crazy. You know what, what I'm talking about. It was crazy. And I'm talking about we were turning people away. So it got to the point when... We were almost losing money because mm -hmm. it started to back. Our success was backfiring because then people started talking. What's the point of going to Bright? You can never get in there. So on bad advice, we decided that we needed to swap up and get something larger. But it wasn't even bad advice. The restaurant was falling apart. And, and the restaurant we were in was falling apart. Oh, hang on, ask um, the phone. I'm sorry. i got to just take this. If it ain't nobody, I'll hang up. Hello? Uh, there you go again. I'm still filming, Ray. I'm sorry. I got to call you back. All right? We're in the middle of filming. I'll call you back. You call me back. I will call you back. Bye. So. Was that dad? That was your father. I'll calling ring from America. I will ring he, him. He rang in the last interview and I told him <laughs> to wait. So, we needed to move to larger premises. Got me all hot and bothered now. I'm sweating. Let me turn my fan on. I'm sorry, y'all. I am a menopausal woman. <laughs> <laughs> I need my fan. So, I then, so we moved, but unfortunately, we moved from a 40 seater to like a 150 seater. And to be honest, for the first two years, we did really good yeah, there. We did. But then the recession hit. 2008, when the world fell apart. And it did. And it did, not just us. So people stopped going out to eat. Mm -hmm. So Monday through Thursday, we were empty. Yeah. But yet, you can't just close. So I still had, to, just in case somebody happened to turn up, but I had staff that we, I had yeah, to we, pay. So I was about to say, we had staff. We had staff. And, and, we, you know, and I was loyal to these yeah. people. They had mortgages yeah. and they had bills to pay. They did. Turn that fan on. So we had to keep them on. We were full Friday, Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Absolutely rammed. Packed. But I'm sorry, you cannot pay seven days bills mm -hmm. with three days work. Yeah. And we tried even to the point of, yeah, I'll put it out there. My husband and I, we went bankrupt. Yeah. But I did everything I could to keep that restaurant afloat and open. And then Gordon came back. He did his revisit. And when he came back, oh, my God. I mean, at that point, we had, I mean, when he first came to visit, it was just me, Brian, and A.D. There were three of us in yeah. that kitchen. When he came back, I think I had about 25 people up in that crazy. kitchen. It's it was crazy. a nightmare. It's crazy. And because my career had taken off, yeah. you know, I was in demand. I had written a cookbook, so I was out of the restaurant a lot, trying to promote the restaurant, trying to make money to keep things afloat. I took my eye off the ball. Yep. So I was dependent on other people to do the job. Now, that's what Gordon told me I had to do. He said, you got to get out of that kitchen. You got to let other people do it. And I trusted them. And unfortunately, things, the standards slipped, you know? You know what? At the end of the day, we were open from 2001 to 2009. We I never had a loan from the bank. No, we did. We did all right. Yeah, banks wouldn't give us no money. They promised us money, but they didn't give us nothing. We did all right. We we did it off of our back, off of hard work. But it came to a point when we just had to say yeah. goodbye. Goodbye. You know? Do you miss it? Um, I miss the interaction with yeah. the people. Yeah, me That's too. what I miss the most. Me too. I miss meeting new people, creating, because I invented and made a lot of new dishes while I was there. Mm -hmm. I miss that part of it. Yeah. What I don't miss is having to deal with the business side, yeah. having to raise the money, yeah. having to be responsible for paying everybody, because I can tell you this right now, 
We employed well over 100 people in those years. We paid above minimum wage. We paid minimum above wage minimum existed. wage <laughs> and everybody got paid. They did. The only people that didn't get paid were, the suppliers. were, were me, my husband, <laughs> my <Me>. daughter, <laughs> and maybe some of the suppliers. And to you, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I went bankrupt. And I tried to pay back what I get. But you know what? This is the type of person I am. If I'm ever in that position where I got excess money, they will get the biggest surprise of their yeah, lives. Because I will just turn up to them and I will go, you know what? Remember 10 years ago, I went bankrupt, left owing your company some money, even though, I, even though you may have claimed it already back from your insurance. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them. Did. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. And yeah. I'll give it up. I will. I will give it up. I'm with you. I'm. You know, we do that because yeah. that's just the way I roll. I would give it up. But you know, the restaurant was great while it lasted. But you know what? I'm having so much fun, more fun right now, teaching in schools. Yeah. Um, I went back to fostering, so I'm a foster carer as well. But teaching and sharing and doing festivals. And right now, hey, I think I found my I think I can do my little cooking in my own kitchen. Yeah. I can talk to the world. I can interact with people. I'm enjoying it. I'm here for the ride <laughs> of my life. Come join me. Come and be part of my world. I don't know where that one came from. <laughs> right, Mum, I've got to go. I've go. Pick up the kids. Go pick up the kids. <laughs> Bye.